Chapter 18, Quechua Soul Mountain. Quote, Don Juan Matus, you have to stop the world. They have been dancing up here for three days. The pure white glacier begins to light up in the frozen high altitude air of dawn. Dressed in traditional Inca skirts for the women, and ponchos for the men, the more than 50,000 indigenous Peruvians suddenly stop the riot of music, including drums, flutes, trumpets, huge tubas, and yes, even whistles. They have laboriously lugged it all up here to celebrate the Snow Star Festival, Coyuriti, and finally now to witness its climax when these first rays hit the giant wooden crosses they risk life and limb to firmly plant on the ice high above us. I'm with my film crew to document this extraordinary festival to celebrate the Pleiades, to celebrate Jesus Christ, and to celebrate the mountains and the ice, which feed water to thousands, 5,000 meters below. I am overcome with emotion whilst recording this film segment for the Earth Pilgrims documentary. The human energy of prayer and sacrifice that must happen up here to successfully honour the Lord of Coyuriti has just peaked as the entire congregation stands silent in front of the glacier. The crosses will be sanctified by this first light. They have been carried from all over Peru to be blessed and to be returned to their communities as signs of a successful pilgrimage to this holy place. An enormous wave of something indescribable has hit me, square in the heart. In a word, it is surely a wave of beauty, generated by the pure of heart who have suffered in extreme cold up here after having filled up trucks with themselves and their cooking gear and travelled for days, sometimes weeks, just to get here. We are the only non-Indigenous people on this mountain now. For these past three days, they have sung and prayed and danced and whipped each other symbolically as they twirl and spin to the raucous music of brass bands. Brass bands high in the Andes? They stopped the world. Or in other words, they use the invisible energy of the soul to connect to the great spirit. Such soul ceremony, to give it a generic name, is a global phenomenon which has largely been forgotten, it seems to me, in this post-industrial age. I first met the Quechua people, those indigenous Peruvians, who share the language of the same name, during a journey with medical anthropologist Alberto Violdo in 1995. You will be reading more of him in a later chapter. A tall, handsome, Cuban-American, he had written several seminal books on Peruvian shamanism and had been in contact with one group of the Quechua in particular for almost two decades when we met for the second time in Cusco. They were the Quero tribe and held the distinction of being the last living descendants of the mighty Inca. When their distinctive ponchos are seen in Cusco, the people in the street take notice. Somehow they have managed to maintain their beliefs and most importantly their techniques for soul retrieval. Now that we know how serious PTSD that's post-traumatic stress disorder, can be, and how many of us hold trauma deep inside our being, this expression has taken on more significance. Simply put, the mirror of our soul can appear to have been shattered, the shards spewing apart to leave us disconnected and fearful. The Kero had taught Violdo their medicine and he had taught us 
during ceremonies how to remedy this shattering. Thanks to him, I fell in love with the indigenous vitality and richness of Peru and would return nine more times after that first journey in the mid-90s, one such trip taking me here to the Sinacara glaciers. Something has just happened up here in this high-altitude valley that no science will ever grasp and no philosophy can ever reproduce. When this many people who know they are souls exercise those souls consciously, such energy waves as I clearly felt can get generated. The result is that human and environment get as deeply connected as do human soul and divine source. Heaven, earth, man become a standing wave of impossible power. It is not the power of force, of cognitive planning and financial input, but rather the pure and simple activity of humble souls living very tough lives as the lower class of Peruvian society where the white and the mestizo mixed bloods dominate still. Being a copper skin Quechua in modern Peru basically sets you up for a life of poverty and struggle. Since Christianity was always a religion mainly for the poor, I have no doubt about this, seeing the true passion of people in rags who throng to the churches here. It greatly helped raise the spirit of the majority of Peruvians. How? By giving them hope. And this festival, though originally a shamanic celebration of water and life, somehow brings them all together for three days of intense celebration and self-sacrifice. Such a fusion of shamanistic practices with religious beliefs is often called syncretic. And nowhere is it more obvious than in Peru. You might call it Catholic shamanism. We were treated with respect the entire time we filmed up there. Not one person complained about our entering the dance circles or recording the music. After the dawn ceremony, we were privileged to gain entry to the astonishing church they somehow built up here where all the glacier crosses are ceremoniously taken in for confirmation of their having been blessed. Thousands of candles and scores of people packed the simple structure while thousands queued outside to be allowed up close to the crucifixes, decorated with indigenous patterns woven by hand and draped across them. We filmed as the heroic carriers returned from the high glacier with the huge sacramental crosses it took each several men to carry. The closest I have come to experiencing this type of group souls in action via ceremony, ritual or festival is in Japan, where Shinto rites st still proudly carry the torch of the human soul and emphasize its eternal relationship with both heaven and earth. In fact, the Mayan and Incan soul, which is still evident in the small statured indigenous populations of Mexico and Peru, is very close in feeling as well as physiognomy to the Japanese. This is because, first and foremost, the earth is revered, nature is worshipped, and the rest is just semantics. How we ever lost this primal relationship to earth is easy enough to track by looking at the development of machines and technology over the past three centuries. Western interpretations of Middle Eastern stories told by Jesus who very often talked about nature, deftly forgot that he never mentioned that we are the top of the pyramid and thus nature serves us. In both the Old Testament and the New, our relationship with earth is honored, and only much later did the soul become something ephemeral and spiritual with no connection to earth. This was a disastrous failure for humanity. It was surely a failure of religious genius too. But what if the entire plan and purpose of the invisibly real human soul is to incarnate in a perishable body, in an ever-changing physical environment where death and disease, destruction and ruin can happen at any instant? What if we have actually lost contact with our souls through almost totally denying their presence? 
Well, we have. And that is why people like Alberto Violdo teach ancient practices, like ambassadors from our indigenous wisdom traditions helping us make that reconnection last. Violdo proved his teachings work by rising up from death's door, diagnosed with a hopeless case of multiple organ failure, and then going to Peru, where he was restored by his Amazonian shamanic brothers. His heart and liver were close to collapse, the doctor said, and his brain was riddled with parasites. Not only did he recover using a clever blend of both shamanic and modern medicine, but he maintains that his brain even functions better because he has repaired the luminous body of the soul that he claims surrounds and penetrates our physical body. I have witnessed such healing myself as later expeditions to Peru with Japanese would show. One doctor returned with no more malignant cells in his testicular cancer and one woman completely lost the uterine fibrosis she had left Japan with. Later, I would learn that the most important connection that we ignore, that of us and Mother Earth, is clearly the source of all vitality and health, and if we do ignore it, we shall suffer. The Peruvians call her Pachamama, Mother Earth.